Okay, where is where's the size? everyone who's here we just have a few people here in the sanctuary to prepare for our annual meeting it's wonderful to see all of you online so we're glad to have you with us and we will have a shorter worship service this morning and we will begin our annual meeting around 10 30 right after worship is over. So I want to read the words that are on the slide this morning. So now let us gather our hearts and our thoughts and minds in worship together. I am the light of the world. You people come and follow me. If you follow Bill, if you just hit the unmute button, we'll be able to hear you, and then just start over. Okay, all right. Through you, O oh God, comes the visions of the young and the dreams of the old, the commanding words of the prophets, the teachings of Jesus, the guidance in the early church letters. Through you comes the life of the church in the vitality of faith. Glory be to you, our God and given, giver of life. Love to praise, says Mother Teresa. Prayer enlarges our hearts so that we, can, we are capable of receiving and keeping God as our own. God, God of, of mercy and, and compassion. compassion. Imbue your, your spirit of community and justice into the fabric of our lives. In the new year of this congregation, give us a new urgency and a commitment to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and love our neighbors as Jesus taught. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask this. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Nehemiah. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. 
They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Israel, Ezra, the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Then Nehemiah the governor, Isra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send them to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our God. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31a. And this is from the New Revised Standard Version. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head say to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members don't need this. But God has so arranged the body, given, giving the greater honor to the inferior, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it.
Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive, strive for the greater gifts. The word of God for the people of God. And the gospel lesson this morning is from the fourth chapter of Luke, verses 14 through 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then they began to say, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Thanks be to God for the good news. Let us pray. God of all, as we listen to your words this morning and let them wash over us and surround us, and be our foundation of faith. I ask that the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of us be acceptable to you, our strength and redeemer. Amen. So I know it's not what you expected, especially as I look out and see just a few faces here in the sanctuary. It's been almost two years and you all know what I'm talking about. And we all expected it to be different than what it is. We might have thought that things might go back to the way they were in 2019. It doesn't look like 2019. It is different than it was in 2020. But what we were used to in worship, in fellowship, it's just not the way it was. Here's how one pastor and blogger put it. Most of us have returned to in-person gatherings, but they aren't exactly the grand events we envisioned. Vaccine hesitancy, breakthrough infections, overcrowded hospitals, and limited treatments changed our plans. Some people are not yet ready to come back, Others have lost interest in organized religion. Some have moved away, others have died. To be sure, new members have joined our congregations, but most churches have experienced decreased attendance, less money in the offering plate, fewer children, and more questions about how to return 
from our COVID exile. And as a congregation, we've experienced even more change. Your beloved pastor retired, and then there's been other staff changes. I think you're glad to have a pastor back in place, but you recognize that you are in transition in ways unrelated to COVID. And the times of transition are crucial in congregations. These times can build up or break down some of the intangible foundations of the church, like communication and authority and boundaries. People share with me your hopes and dreams, the wants and needs of the congregation, capital campaign, shoring up a building, a sign, ministering to youth and children. I think I could go on about visions for mission and social justice and caring and more. So I don't think there'll be a long congregational vacation coming soon, though I'm not even sure if there is such a thing. Many stories in scripture, they take place in times that were either in transition or were even traumatic. And these stories often result in what is unexpected. I read from Nehemiah, after he had returned to Jerusalem after exile in Babylon. I wonder if that also was a time when the people who would return to Jerusalem thought that things would go back to the way they were before the exile, but the temple was not as it once was. Yes, the walls and the city gates were rebuilt remarkably fast, in fact, but other destruction remained. Those people had felt abandoned by God, and when they heard the word of God read, they wept. And it appears they wept because they were either saddened or ashamed of their lack of faith, or how far they had traveled or been apart from God's word. Or did they also weep because of a flood of grief? gazing around at the destruction that was near them, knowing that what they heard about the golden age of the United Kingdom under King David was gone for good. Maybe they wondered if life would get much better. We are grieving for the loss of what we remember in the past, the chapter of the church's life under a beloved pastor, perhaps the loss of the 20 years of year-round congregation when we could worship together physically without masks, without taking any, we didn't need to take anything seriously. We took everything for granted. Well, that's no longer the case. And here we are concerned about the future, which is unknown. So I think it behooves us to listen to the words of Nehemiah, who was deeply concerned for the people of Jerusalem who had returned from the exile in Babylon. Nehemiah, through a great struggle, achieved his mission of rebuilding the walls and the gates of the city. But he did not know what the outcome would be for the people. But when the people gathered and they heard the word, Nehemiah said, this day is holy to the Lord. Well, we are com a community united in faithfulness to God. I'm sure of that. Whether we are in a pandemic or not, whether Sunday school is up and running or not, whether we can worship in person, which we anticipate we will do soon or not. We are here, gathered, because of a foundation that stands on thousands of years of God's faithfulness to us. The God who tells good news to the poor. The God who gives to us a church with many different gifts and calls us to work together like a body. That has not changed. We do not know the future of the pandemic, whether families will return or even the future of the congregation. But we know that this day is holy. God is good. 
and present with us, and we gather, endeavoring to be the body of Christ in this place and this time, and seeking to recover, uncover, or discover the wealth and the heritage of faith that undergirds us, and that keeps us striving, especially in times of transition and through the unknown, so that we can hear that ancient Nehemiah calling out, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And may these words preached in God's name give to God glory and honor. As we come to our prayers this morning, Ethel heard yesterday that one of our members who was a church member and a resident of Pleasant View in Concord died. And this was of course, Judy Sawyer. And we know that Judy was afflicted for many decades with multiple sclerosis. And the church had a very strong ministry with her building a ramp to the church so she could come for the first Thanksgiving service. Gray Fitzgerald, one of the pastors, organized refreshments in Judy's driveway so she could talk to people from outside her bedroom window. There was even a baby monitor connected to Judy's bedroom, and it was connected with the church. Nancy, the other pastor, embraced and jumped into the virtual world that Judy inhabited. And Ethel told me that Judy kept her faith and beautiful spirit throughout her life. And the family will be spreading her ashes in the spring in the field next to the church. We give thanks that Judy is now free from pain and suffering. And we ask for prayers for her family. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And also prayers for Sandy and Ken Burt. Sandy is in hospice at home at this time. Gracious God, hear our prayers. If there are any other prayers, please share them in the sanctuary or add them to the chat and I'll find them. Suzanne has asked prayers that the spirit will move through the annual meeting today and we will feel energized and have visions. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Stan Moulton, for a deep as Elaine has asked for prayers for Stan Moulton, who is feeling some loneliness these days. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Gail Murphy has asked that we hold Roberta Pratt in our prayers upon the death of her sister. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We lift up to God these prayers that have been said from our mouths and we lift up to God also those other prayers that are upon our hearts and minds as we come together for God with our morning prayers. Holy God, maker of heaven and earth, we come to worship for many different reasons from many different perspectives. But we all need to hear a word from you and to recognize that you love us and are present with us. Jesus Christ, you have promised us forgiveness. Help us to live as forgiven people. Spirit of God, Fill us with a spiritual fire so that our hearts and minds are excited for the gospel and so that we will not rest until Christ's word of peace 
love and justice is known and shown throughout the world. May our church be brave enough to accept the challenge of being your disciples today and spread your work of love and justice. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us take this time to give thanks to God and let us honor God for all the blessings and the goodness we have received. and bounty of the earth provide for our physical needs. Your church helps meet our spiritual needs and offers us opportunities for learning your word, experiencing fellowship, and serving in Christ's name. We praise you that we can give because it is in sharing our gifts that we find joy. We express our gratitude for all that we are and all that we have through our offerings. Amen. Friends of the Congregational Church of North Barnstead, I bring you greetings on behalf of all of those of us who walk with you in faith in the New Hampshire Conference of the United Church of Christ. I am the Reverend Gordon Rankin, Conference Minister of the New Hampshire Conference. And today I am here to give voice to our abundant gratitude for all the ways in which your church community has given to support our church's wider mission, often known as OCWM. Your OCWM basic support giving of $3,555 and your contributions to three of our four national offerings have been combined with the giving of other churches to make vital impact in propagating the work of God here in New Hampshire, in our country, and all over the world. Through our national setting, you have given to support global missionaries and global mission partners, provided resources for worship and for justice conversations that are utilized by many of our churches, and have provided the staffing and fundraising resources that have allowed the UCC to abolish over $75 million of medical debt that was impacting families all over the United States. Through the New Hampshire Conference, you have helped us provide the necessary safety measures to be back at Horton Center for this past summer's camping season, to work with over 40 of our churches, including yours, 
on finding their future pastoral leadership, to make our resources for preparing folks for ministry more robust, and to support many of our churches in the development of innovative, sustainable new ministries. I always say it, these ministries that I have described, they're not just ministries of the United Church of Christ or of the New Hampshire Conference. They are ministries of your church. You have helped to make them happen. On behalf of the United Church of Christ and the New Hampshire Conference, as well as on behalf of all the other churches and settings of ministry that your giving has impacted, I say thank you. Thank you for what you do to further the work of God and to spread the love of God in our world. Blessings to you. Please join me in reciting the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. You would like. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through the prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, renewing and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Now may the God whose vision is for a new heaven and a new earth disturb us and heal us and bless us with the call 
and the power to live out the gospel. Amen. This ends our worship. Emily, do you have any announcements? I would like to thank the Duns, Laura and Bill, for being readers today. We also had Joanne White doing some reading. I did some graphic design and production work today. And Cheryl Richardson provided us with some lovely music. This week we have meditation on Tuesday evening and Thursday evening at 5 p.m. with Joanne White. And we'll have a Bible study on Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning with Charlie Bars. And then we return to worship on Sunday, the last day of the month. Anybody else having announcements? Please feel free to unmute yourself and say your announcements. Because that is the end of our slideshow. Yeah.